special guests here today. My name is Louisa Welch, and I'm proud to be the principal here at Bayside Elementary School. At this time, I welcome some members of our local scout troop, 496, who will present our flag and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. After the pledge, please remain standing as our guest, Ms. Dewan Wright, fourth grade teacher here at Bayside, and Mrs. Maria Jones, wife of fourth grade teacher Dana Jones, perform our national anthem. Audience, please rise. Scouts in uniforms and all those with current or pre previous military service, please salute. All others, please remove their hats and put their right hand over their heart. Colored guard forward march. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Color Guard Post the Colors. Color guard, honor your colors. Color guard, dismissed.
that's a hard act to follow. We are delighted, all you things. We are delighted to have you join us this morning to help celebrate our observance of Veterans Day. We are celebrating Veterans Day a few days early since we'll not be in school on Monday. It's my hope that our celebration this morning shows just how much we truly appreciate our veterans and the sacrifices they have made for our country. At this time, would our students, if you have a veteran, family member, or friend that's here, I'd like to ask that student to come up and sit on the floor in front of their veteran. So please take a minute to come up and sit with your veteran if you have someone here. As our students are finding their veterans, I do want to take a moment to thank um, a few people for making this day possible. Um, first of all, thank you to Ms. Wright and Mrs. Jones for beginning our, our wonderful assembly. So let's give them another round of applause. And also thank you to Kathy Fowler, Mrs. White, Mr. Jones, and the rest of the Veterans Day Committee. Without all your help, this day could not be possible. I'd also like to take a moment to recognize Dr. Andrea Kane, uh, Queen Anne's County Schools Superintendent, who's here with us this morning. Took a, a few minutes out of her busy day, so thank you very much, Dr. Kane, for being here. So Veterans Day is particularly close to my heart, and I'm pleased to continue what has become a tradition here at Bayside to hold this assembly, to thank our veterans and our active duty military for their service to our country. My family has a strong connection to military service. Both my brothers made lifelong careers in the Navy and the Army, respectively. My father, who I'm proud to have here with me today, served in the Army in Korea. Seated next to my dad is my mom, Nancy, whose father and my grandfather, Flight Officer Thomas E. Davis Sr., who you see pictured up on our screen, was a World War II veteran who flew a C-46 in the China Burma India route. He carried needed supplies to the Chinese forces over the dangerous route of the Himalaya Mountains. When we say thank you to our veterans for their service, we recognize that your service to our country includes not only the job that you did as a member of the military, but we also thank you for the sacrifices that you made beyond that. At times that could have meant putting yourself in harm's way, or it could have meant spending weeks, months, or even years apart from family and loved ones all for the purpose of protecting our freedoms that we enjoy here in the United States today. This morning I'm going to take a few minutes, if you bear with me, to share a little glance into the past to illustrate the kinds of sacrifices made by my grandfather and his family, including my mom. Not unlike those sacrifices made by the veterans and families who are seated all around us today. During World War II, in the time that my grandfather was away from his family, through training and flights that took him around the world as a C-46 pilot, he wrote to my grandmother, Anne, almost every single day without fail. My grand kept all those letters, and my mom has worked tirelessly to put them in order and catalog them so that now we have a treasure in those binders of letters that tell Gramps' travels the dangers he faced, and the sacrifices he made for his country. I'd like to share excerpts from two of those letters with you today. One that he wrote to my Uncle Ted, my mom's brother, and another that he wrote to my mom, Nancy. So boys and girls, when we talk about sacrifice, remember that that means something that we give up for someone else's benefit. And as I read my grandfather's words, I'd like you to listen for clues of the sacrifices that he and his family made. The letters are dated January 6, 1945, 
when my grandmother, or grandfather rather, is just getting ready to head overseas. At this time, my mom had just turned nine years old, and my uncle, her brother, was just getting ready to turn 11 years old. So here's what my grandpa said. Dear Teddy, you have a birthday along about this time of year, and I feel that I should be home with you. How much I'd like to help you cut that birthday cake, you'll never know. And how much I would like to be home helping you with your play and schoolwork is more than I can describe. I do hope you take your schoolwork more serious than you used to take it. That's some good advice, isn't it? <laughs> Please believe me that your attitude now towards school should be a good one. It would have been ridiculous if someone told me when I was in grade school, or even high school for that matter, that I would be a pilot in the Army and I would fly the Atlantic at all. You will be a lot older before you realize how much it's hurt me to be away from you and Nancy and Mother. But yet I feel that somehow you realize it now. In a few days, or maybe even tomorrow, I will have the rest of the crew assigned to me, and then with the exception of stopping for cargo, will shove off for some overseas port. And don't think for a minute that you won't be right there alongside me all the time. I'd like to buzz you before I go, which means like do a low pass over the house. But the Army authorities frown on that sort of thing. Well, Ted, be a sensible boy and don't do anything you know isn't right just because someone else wants you to. I'll place my bets on you, Teddy, and I know you won't let me down. Love, Dad. And here's his letter to my mom. Dear Nancy, don't be too surprised at receiving a letter from me today, but I had the urge to write both Teddy and yourself a letter. I know that these days you must be pretty busy with your cutouts, which are paper dolls, if you didn't know. And I'll bet they look very good. I'm the same fellow that raised heck with you when you left the cutouts all over the floor when you were playing with them but I sure would welcome the chance to watch you make that mess right now. As I look out of this window at the lights, I'm reminded that I am away from home and you and Teddy and mother. I have been away from home now for almost a year and the best I have to hope for is that I will get the chance to see you before another year passes. It all means that I hope you continue to be a good little girl and not cause mother any trouble because she and I have plenty to think about. Nothing would give me greater satisfaction than to know that you and Teddy get along as you should. Sure, it means sacrificing once in a while, but we all must learn to do that. There are lots of things I don't care to do, but I have to do them to keep peace in my section of the Army. I don't know when I will get away from here, but when I do, it will be the start of a journey that will last for quite a while. I don't like the thoughts of being away from you any more than you do. So do your best to help your mom out. And I will always think of you as being mother's little helper. Well, Nancy, I will say goodnight. Lots of love and sweet dreams, Dad. It would be almost a full year before he was able to step foot on US soil and return home to see his family. But they were very blessed that he did, as many others did not. Thank you for allowing me a few moments to share those words from my grandfather, and I hope that they will inspire us to remember the sacrifices, the things that we give up, that were made by our veterans, as well as their families long ago, and those that are still made today. We have a wonderful program for you this morning in which you'll hear some patriotic musical performances from our Bayside Chorus, some reading dedicated to our veterans here with us today, and we'll receive a special message from our esteemed guest speaker, Chief Master Sergeant Kelly J. Evans. Finally, we'll take some time to individually recognize each of the veterans who's joined us today, and we hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much for being here. And now our Bayside Chorus will perform for us.
this time, I'm going to bring up Mr. Damon Jones, who is going to introduce our guest speaker for this morning. That was my first part. If you give yourself a hand, let's do that one more time yourself. And let's give our veterans a hand today. Thank you for coming out. Um, I was given the task of presenting Chief Master Sergeant Edmonds today, and I said note to self, Dana, talk for about one minute, and then introduce her. If I give myself a time limit, then I can usually stay on track, and my wife is here today, so she'll help me stay on track. But I could not come up here to the podium without um, first saying thank you to uh, the Bayside community for 365 days ago, I was overseas, I was deployed, and we put together a slideshow of Slightly, my team did, and you guys saw it, most of you um, saw it. Raise your hand if you saw the slideshow from last year. Look at all those hands, very good. So we have the third graders, you guys are in for a treat today. We have Chief Edmonds, um, I've worked with her, but I'm gonna do the formal uh, biography reading, and I'll step aside and let you all hear her. Chief Master Sergeant Kelly Edmonds is the superintendent for the 174th, 175th Support Squadron, Warfield Air National Guard Base, Maryland. Chief Edmonds is an advisor to the commander of the Health, Morale, Welfare, and Professional Development and Discipline over, for over 50 airmen assigned to the 175th Force Support Squadron. She is responsible for providing vital mission support through manpower, personnel, sustainment services, force development, Mortuary Affairs, Honor Guard, and Installation Readiness to over 1,300 military, civilian, and uh, families, as well as their retirees as well. Chief Master Sergeant Edmonds grew up in Edgewood, Maryland, and entered the Maryland National Guard in November 1996. She attended technical training and graduated as an engineer apprentice in February 1998. During her assignment with the 175th Civil Engineering Squadron, she held positions such as the Squadron Logistics Manager and Engineer Section Superintendent. Chief Edmonds served multiple tours with the Continental U.S. North American Astrophysospace, Astrophysospace, excuse me, Defense Command Region. First Air Force in the Northern Tidal Base, Florida, in support of the Homeland Defense Mission. Chief Edmonds also served an extended tour as a watch officer in the Maryland Joint Operations Center, Maryland Joint Force Headquarters Operations Directorate, where she worked closely with the Maryland Emergency Management Agency in continuous support of domestic operations. After 13 years in the 175th, Chief Edmonds transferred to the National Guard Bureau Human Resources Directorate, Joint Base Andrews, Maryland. During her assignment there, she served as a statutory tour human resource manager and superintendent of personnel programs. In 2015, she returned to the Maryland Air National Guard for continued development. She has participated in operations Noble Eagle, Enduring Freedom, Jump Start, Baltimore Rally, Inherent Resolve, and Freedom's Centennial. Can we give her a round of applause? Outstanding career thus far. But one thing that she did mention, guys, and I, as I read through it, I said, well, she didn't mention anything about um, the physical fitness component to her career. Chief Edmonds has continuously uh, scored 100% uh, on her physical fitness exams over the last almost 23 years. Everybody give her a hand for that. For that for the physical fitness and um, the age bracket and it goes by gender as well. But pretty much, I don't care who you are, running a mile and a half in 11 minutes and 22 seconds is pretty impressive, wouldn't you say so? Not only that, but within a minute and a half, she had to complete 38 push-ups. Can you believe that? 38 of them in a minute and a half. Super quick, super quick. And then we had the sit-up component where she had to complete 41 sit-ups in a minute and a half. Everybody give her one more hand of applause for that. 
So one of the things that I decided, I said, you know what, if, if I can't beat her, I will join her because I have never scored 100% on my physical exam. In fact, probably the highest I've ever scored was about a 94%. So for somebody to consistently max out on every category, um, I think that's pretty impressive. But what I will say is I can actually come up here and I can talk a little bit because there is, um, we're in this assembly and I know that uh, there is not any chance. So I can talk kind of trash. Y'all know what trash talking is, right? So the trash talking that I'm going to say today is if we did have to do something like that today, I'm sure that I would just blow her out of the water because I've drunk my coffee and I've had my breakfast and I'm all set for today. So anyway, she's in this mindset of speaking today, so I'm gonna take advantage of that and just kind of leave it there. I'm gonna leave it there, okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen, please give her a warm welcome to Chief Mass Sergeant Edmonds. Because if there's anything that we're mindful of in the military, it's making sure that everyone understands the rank structure. And in case you aren't aware, I outrank Tech Sergeant Jones. So with that said, uh, Sergeant Jones, I need you front seven. <laughs> now drop and give me ten. <laughs> I'll do that, but as long as you guys are kind of count with me. You're going to count with me? I'm going to hold you off on getting started there. Because as a leader, I don't ask any of my airmen to do something I'm not willing to do with them. So if you'll hold off for a second, I'm going to get down here, and you guys are going to count both of us off for 10 push of us. Perfect. Singing this chorus. Wow, guys. 
Great job. I'd like to thank my good friend, Mr. Dan Jones, who invited me out here today, and all of the other guests and students in attendance. <laughs> Lastly, although he could not be here today, I want to give a little shout out to another special veteran, my husband, Mr. Lonnie Evans, who served as a master sergeant in the Maryland Guard for 21 years. I am deeply honored to stand before you today in celebration of this upcoming Veterans Day. I have to tell you, I was even more excited to come here after hearing about all the love Bayside Elementary showed Sergeant Jones while he was deployed last year. Receiving those cards, letters, and gifts meant the world to him. And I thank you all for being so thoughtful. I know from personal experience how much that stuff really means. I was asked to share a glimpse of my military journey from airman to chief. I enlisted in the Maryland Air Guard almost 23 years ago. Our base is located in Middle River and is home to the first cyberspace operations group in the entire Air National Guard, along with the coolest plane, too. It's often referred to as a ground soldier's best friend, the A-10 Warthog. I was a young single mom at the time who could not afford to remain in college, and I wanted more than a job. I was searching for a career. My dad, who was a veteran as well, having served in the Vietnam and Desert Storm Wars, was a sergeant major in the Army at the time, and he encouraged me to join the Air Guard. I enlisted in November of 96 and left in January for Air Force basic training. Oh, what a ride that was. From people screaming in your face to staying in a big open dorm trying to get along with 40 other women. Talk about drama. <laughs> over the course of the next six weeks, we went from clueless individuals tripping over our feet to a team, better yet, a flight of distinguished female airmen who held our heads high as we marched across the parade ground on graduation day. That was also the day I faced my first challenge, which was with my daughter who had just turned two before I left for basic training. She stayed with my parents while I was away, and they brought her down to celebrate my graduation. Immediately after graduation ends, family and friends rush to parade grounds in search of their loved one. When we finally saw each other for the first time, my parents gave me a huge hug and said how proud they were of me. And rage, they were just raging. My daughter seemed a little tentative when she saw me. She was not as near, nearly as excited as we were. Uh, it was almost as though she didn't recognize me. <clears throat> it made me pretty sad. Good news is about halfway through our dinner, she raised her hand saying, Mommy! And I picked her up and held her really tight with lots of relief. I was so afraid my little girl forgot who I was. And I found myself hoping I hadn't made a mistake, which I can confidently say now is not the case. Good news is none of you will ever have to face that challenge with cell phones and video chat capabilities. You guys are all set. I had a break in training after that due to my school dates not lining up. So I came home and waited until the following December to attain, uh, to attend tech school. During that break, I showed up for drill and spent time with my section learning about my job. I got a little after day school during that time. I overslept a couple times and showed up late for work without much concern or remorse for my action. That is when Master Sergeant Dean Kaufman decided to open my eyes to reality. He arranged to have me report to the commander's office where my supervisor and he, along with the commander, waited for me. I reported in and was caught quite off guard when Master Sergeant Kaufman introduced me as the airman he wanted to get rid of. 
She said, sir, we don't have time to deal with someone who clearly doesn't want to be here. My supervisor quickly jumps in and said, I don't think that's the case. The Master Sergeant Thompson shut him down. He glared over at me and asked, do you want to be in the military and a part of this squadron? I immediately responded yes and apologized for giving him an impression otherwise. He stated from this point forward, you better be here 15 minutes early with your uniform press and your boots spit shined. I quickly acknowledged the requirements and from that day forward, I made sure there was no doubt about my commitment and loyalty to my unit as well as my desire to serve. I finally left for engineer assistant tech school that following October and graduated in February of 98. During that time, I was selected by the military training instructors to be a student leader. I started out as a flight leader, identified by a yellow rope on my sleeve, and was responsible for the accountability of about 40 airmen. I went on from there to be selected as the Red Road, student leader of all engineer students about 160 airmen total. I was proud of that achievement and enjoyed the opportunity to serve in a leadership role. Not too bad for the airmen who nearly got fired a couple months ago. I ended up excelling in my training and it turned out that keeping my uniform pressed and my boots spit shine really paid off. I was excited to get home and let Master Sergeant Kaufman know. He really helped instill pride of service in me and the importance of understanding, good or bad, I am always a representation of my unit, the Maryland Air Guard, and the United States Air Force. I would never take that lightly again. When I got home from tech school, I worked hard on drill weekends, took care of all the training requirements, and continued to earn my place in the squadron. Then I was introduced to my first goalie. I was one of three women in our unit. There was an older gentleman in our squadron, a master sergeant, in charge of one of the sections who didn't seem to like me very much. Our squadron went on a trip to Germany where we were tasked with demo and remodeling of the building on base. I was working demolition when this master sergeant walked in, saw me holding a hammer, and said, girls have no business swinging a hammer. He walked over to the group of guys encouraging them to laugh at my expense. It was the first of many mean comments he would continue to make after we returned home. It was hurtful and it made me angry. But what I eventually came to realize is that anger made me stronger and way more determined. You see, I'm extremely competitive, as you can just see with those push-ups too. And, I, um, and that served me really well in this particular situation. I put in the extra work and learned how to do everything I could in engineering, from swinging a hammer to operating heavy equipment, from front end loaders to dump trucks. I started to develop a reputation of a hard worker and a team player. I would do whatever it took to get the job done, and everyone in my squadron knew it. That master sergeant kept making unkind remarks, but his audience decreased. Everyone started having my back. And the more he treated me poorly, the less a part of the team they made him feel. Honestly, the more I learned and the harder I worked, the less I cared about what he had to say. I focused on what I could control, which was making sure I was the best engineering airman I could be. And because of him, I was much more mindful about welcoming new people into our squadron and looking out for other women to make sure they weren't made to feel the same way, or anyone else made to feel that way, for that matter. That bully ended up mentioning to me before we retired that I surprised him and ended up fitting in pretty well in our civil engineer squadron. It wasn't the apology I hoped for, but his words meant a lot. And I'm really grateful for the lessons I learned from that experience. One of my most memorable moments was as a young senior airman, I deployed less than a month after our country had been attacked on 9-11. I was assigned to Al Dhafra Air Base in the United Arab Emirates, 
Apparently, the skies in the Middle East are a little dangerous for our aircraft to land normally. We had to do what is referred to as a combat dive when we flew in, which basically means you go from flying a normal, straight flying aircraft to a deep, spiraling dive where the pilot pulls up right before you hit the runway and then you pull it in. The girl in the seat next to me got sick. It was terrible. It was terrible. But I was so happy that I wasn't the one that needed to use those throw up bags. Not cool. Not cool at all. After we landed, a sergeant jumped on the plane and announced, Welcome to war, ladies and gentlemen. Get your flash bags, your helmet, and your combat gear. I was scared to death. Apparently, the United States began bombing Afghanistan that day in response to the terrorist attacks. I deployed with about eight guys from my unit, all guys, which meant that first night, I spent by myself in a very big, empty tent. I cried myself to sleep that night, wondering what I had gotten myself into. We got right to work the next day, and I loved it. We were working quickly to build the base up as we tripled in size over the course of a week. I'm happy to share, it was only that first night I stayed by myself. It was a pretty good feeling to be a part of our country's response to those terrorist attacks, and I was really excited to get my first deployment under my belt. In 2007, I was selected as a section superintendent in our squadron and promoted to the rank of master sergeant. That following summer, I deployed to Afghanistan for six months. My daughter was a freshman in high school at the time, and she was pretty worried about the deployment with all the news of bad things going on over there. I called home once or twice a week, wrote tons of letters, sent gifts, pictures, and many emails. She told me one night that although it was difficult, my being away, it actually forced her to grow up a little more and helped her feel a little better with challenges in school and with friends. She had a different perspective of what a bad day was, and that helped her stay more positive. Our family, friends, and her high school staff were so supportive during that time, and that peace of mind, that blessing, allowed me to focus on the mission. We were there to build up a forward operating base and, over, and uh, oversaw various construction pro projects being completed by local construction companies and citizens of Afghanistan. Would you believe for some pretty hardcore construction work, those guys made about the equivalent of one US dollar for the whole day. And two dollars a day if they worked on a holiday. Speaking of holidays, I missed a, just about all of them at home that year, but I did get to celebrate with my military brothers and sisters. I have to say we do a really good job of coming together as a family during those times while we're going. It's a special bond we feel, and it really helps us to get through the times away. It was in Afghanistan that I also gained a new appreciation for the freedoms in our country. You see, most girls in Afghanistan would not receive education past sixth grade. The boys were required to take a test after high school which would indicate which of five career paths they could choose, or that they would have to follow. And then they'd attend college accordingly. It was, it's, not that, it's not quite that bad there now, but it's still nowhere near the advantages and opportunities we have in the United States. Don't take that for granted. Now I'd like to share some lessons learned through my military service. I learned how to be resilient and take care of my mental, physical, social, and spiritual well-being in order to prepare for whatever the mission or life brings. I made sure, especially while deployed, I went to church, worked out to stay fit, ran long distances to clear my mind, called and rode home read many books and interacted with my deployed brothers and sisters. Be kind, considerate, and always take care of people. 
you never know what kind of struggle any person is going through at any given time. You will make mistakes, own them. It's your response that matters. Be able to hold your head up high and look yourself in the mirror at the end of every day. You will never be a good leader if you aren't a good follower. Lastly, we do not live or work alone. Give back to the community that supports you. And you guys have a pretty special one. It renews their faith in you and encourages continued support. Our friends, and even more importantly, our family, deserve to know how grateful we are for their sacrifices and that we couldn't do it without them. I've had a great career that has taken me through nine countries, 14 states, six deployments, and maximum progression through the enlisted ranks. I'm excited to share that if I could do it, every single one of you can too. Find your strength, figure out your passion, and make the most of it. I have to say, uh, that particular thought came to me after I looked at your school's website, and I saw the wall quote painted on there by Mrs. Pendranza. I was very inspired by that. Thank you all again for this opportunity. Now I think I have some uh, pre-selected volunteers in the audience that are going to come up here and help me execute a little mission. on the count of three, and whoever gets the furthest completes the mission. Sound good? All right. Come on. All right. Ready? Five, three, two, one. I think your teachers all have the information on creating uh, or engineering your own paper airplanes at home, so I certainly hope you guys take advantage of that. Um, thank you again, Bayside Elementary, for having me here today. Um, it was an absolute pleasure. Can I real quick just get all of the veterans in this room to stand up? Let's give them a round of applause. It's my pleasure and honor to serve alongside of each of you. Please take your seat. I wish you all Godspeed and a very happy Veterans Day. Thank you so much uh, for being our guest speaker. We are so happy to have you and so happy to, to hear your message. And I'm um, very glad to meet you. We've heard such good things from uh, Technical Sergeant Jones, Mr. Jones, as we know him. And we're very, uh, very glad to have you here today. So at this time, we're going to take a few minutes to recognize the, the veterans that we have here today. Um, I've already introduced my dad, um, who was a Korean War veteran, sergeant in the U.S. Army, James Bennett. We're going to pass around the mic and have each of our veterans just introduce yourself, uh, give your name, rank, and the grants of service that, uh, that you served in. Good morning. My name is Major Bill Lesser. Um, I am a major in the United States Army, currently still serving at the Pentagon today. I'm Jonah's uncle, and uh, I am a graduate of this esteemed school. I'm Colonel Mike Crocker. I'm a uh, West Point graduate, as is Bill, uh, different years. Um, he's much younger than I am, much better looking. Um, and I'm a grandfather for Ryland Kerwin. I served in the Army for uh, 29 years. I am Rex Wells, I'm a former Spec 4 in the United States Army. I spent two years in Germany. Staff Sergeant Duquette, uh, I'm the grand, uh, grandfather of St. Wells. I was in U.S. Air Force. 
morning. My name is Jim Mueller. I was in the U.S. Army Specialist Four Vietnam Vet and the grandfather of Cole Mueller. I was Bill Moore, Sergeant in the Air Force, and the grandfather of Abby Smith, six mother guns. Richard Grant, Corporal of the United States Marines, and the grandfather of Lila and John from the Open Sea. This is my grandson, Mark Kurtz. I'm George Kurtz, Senior Master Sergeant, retired Air Force. Jeff Kennedy, Logistics Specialist, Second Class, United States Navy, and I'm Terry's dad. Brian Piper, Sergeant, uh, Maryland Army National Guard, and the father of Devin Piper. Lieutenant Commander John Delano, United States Navy, and uh, I'm a Kennedy of John Delano's dad. John Lewis, Big uh, Four. U.S. Army, uh, stationed at uh, Berlin, Germany, and my grandson, Elijah Pick. Mark Warren, back four, United States Army, grandfather, G20. Good morning. John DeGore, Staff Sergeant, United States Army, um, Lucas and Lorelei DeGore's father. Morning, Morning Phelps, so Sergeant, United States Marine Corps, and I'm Landon Phelps, solid. Richard West, United States Navy, Airman First Class, Vietnam Vet. I'm the grandfather of Colin West. Hi, my name is Bridget Lohr. I'm Cole Lohr's mom, and I was in the U.S. Air Force for four years as a senior. Sergeant United States Marine Corps, I am Charlotte and Thomas' mom. Hello, I'm Jeremy Ellis, U.S. Army, uh, father of Ethan Adam and Hale. I'm John Lamb, I'm the Engineer the United States Navy. These two young boys, John and Josh Keeper, are my grandsons. This is my granddaughter, Kara Erstbaum. Her dad couldn't make the days of May in the United States Marine Corps. I'm Jerry Young, engine and second class, United States Coast Guard, riding Claire as my grandmother. I'm Tom Corboy, I was a commander in the Navy a long, long time ago, was a Navy fighter pilot. I'm here with my grandchildren, Claire and Tommy Marsden. Jim Burke, uh, Sergeant, U.S. Army, Regular Army, um, Vietnam, um, Ellis. My name is Lorenzo Dimitro. I'm the father of Mrs. Wentz. <laughs> and I served in the uh, um, IG sites in Maryland. Chuck Moore, United States Navy, uh, grandfather of Andy Navy. My name is Jake Tucker, Ronan is my grandson, served in the Navy, shooting crisis, USS Franklin and Roosevelt, CBA 42. Colby well, Goodlove, Army, I'm here with my grandchildren, Paige and Navy Simon. Hello, I'm David Rumsey. I served as a lieutenant platoon leader in Vietnam uh, back in the 60s. Uh, got out, uh, went into the reserves, got reactivated in the Desert Storm, retired from the Marine Corps as a uh, full colonel. Proud to be here with my young grandson, Jackson, uh, one of 17. Hi. My name is Tom Bentley. I'm, uh, what you say, prior service. I did four years in the Navy with a tour in Vietnam. And then I came back in the service did 16 years in the Coast Guard, retired as Chief Warrant Officer. I'm here with my grandson, Vasily Mammoth. Hi, I'm Anthony Clausen, uh, Sergeant United 
States Air Force, former uh, Iraqi during freedom, and I'm here with my son, Keith. I'm Gary Peters, a uh, Naval Academy graduate. I uh, was a lieutenant, served in Desert Shield and Desert Storm. I'm here with Cameron Peters, my son. Good morning, guys, John. This is Corporal Marine Corps, proud dad of Abby J. Good morning, Master Sergeant Warren Vernon, U.S. Army retired. It was a long, circuitous road. Started at Fort Sam Houston. Got out, stayed out six years, gave up three strikes, went back, Fort Leonard Wood, Fort Polk, Fort Benning, Fort Bragg, Fort Meyer, Fort Billboard, Bethesda, Fort Gordon, Frankfurt, Germany, from which I retired in 92. Gentlemen and ladies, the principal gives me permission to address you about a VA benefit that I desperately want you to know. It's called aid and attendance. It's for us veterans of wartime service, of which most of us are, regardless of whether we served in the war zone or not. It's for that time in our lives when we need assistance with our daily living. It's provided for that time, and of course, that time, that assistance is extremely expensive. You can apply for this. You qualify based upon your income that is net of medical expense and your net worth that does not include your primary residence or personal property, just liquid assets. And you can have up to $80,000 last I checked and still qualify. So please check it out. The VA website has excellent information about this benefit, and it's hardly known about by anybody. Aid and attendance. And if any of you have any questions about it, please seek me out after the assembly, and I'll be glad to share any more information I can with you. Thank you. Bill Wood, U.S. Army, uh, Sergeant E-5, uh, Vietnam, 69 and 70. I'm here with my granddaughter, Madison Seville. Chris Malm, U.S. Navy, electrician made second class submarines. I'm here with my daughter, Elizabeth Malm, who's in the third grade. George McBellin, U.S. Navy, single and second class. I'm here with my son, George. Dave Gordy, so bored. <laughs> really, uh, Air Force pilot, 33 years service, my wife. Kenny Gordy, Air Force, nurses for uh, Random. <laughs> Roderick Marlon, 101st Airborne Division in the United States Army, served in Vietnam, 69 70. We were known as those crazy people that jumped out of her for the good air. <laughs> I'm here with my granddaughter, Madison. Thank you. Staff Sergeant Maria Jones, I spent eight years in the Air Force. Tech Sergeant Dana Jones served two, three tours in Iraq, Afghanistan, and recently we just came back from Hong Kong. Bunch of other countries over there, but I'm still currently serving. Have about another year and a half to go before I hit my 20 years, and we'll see what happens from there. And you all already heard from me, so I'm going to pass the uh, the microphone off here. I'm Nancy Cribb. I'm the teacher specialist here, and I'm honored to be the daughter and sister of Air Force veterans. At this time, we have three students who have written something to share with you about veterans. The first one from Mrs. Lindsay's class, third grader, Aiden Sarrier. He looked at his sword and said, I would do anything to defend this country. And we looked to his stars and thanked the warriors who fought the wars. I'm so thankful for the veterans for defending this country. Go to 
Dartmouth's Rights class, Rachel Downey. Better the better, and thank you for your service. No matter how long or short, you still serve. We still look up to you. You are brave. I bet you, if you looked in the mirror, you would see a hero. You are a hero. I think your family members want to be like you, so pass it down to the next generation. You are a hero in our hearts. Thank you for being a leader. And fifth grader from Mrs. Gardner's class, Rachel, excuse me, I'm sorry, Abby Smith. There are people who are fighting for rights and people who already fought for rights. There are people who risked their lives to benefit America. Whatever kind of service you served, whatever or however you fought, we are thankful for you. Thank you, and at the conclusion of our ceremony, we would like to invite our veterans and active duty service members to go back to our cafeteria to enjoy the refreshments that our PTA has provided. Students, let's show our grateful appreciation to our service members for their duty. Thank you, Connor and Haley. So well, we've had a wonderful morning, and today Bayside thanks our veterans for the sacrifices you've made to serve our country and protect our freedoms. We hope that you've enjoyed this small token of our gratitude, and thank you so much for being a part of our celebration. Um, and I thank you for, for allowing us to, to share this time with a few of our heroes. And uh, have a great Veterans Day on Monday, and thank you so much to everyone for coming. Have a great morning.